Grand Teton National Park is one of the most beautiful national parks in the country. In fact, one of the most beautiful places in the country. And honestly, is one of the reasons I come back every single year. Well, that and my wife grew up in nearby Jackson, so that helps. In this video, I'll show you where to stay, where to eat, and what to see, as well as some surprising attractions. And of course, we'll talk a little bit about neighboring Yellowstone, as well as Jackson Hole. First of all, getting here can be a bit of a problem, but Grand Teton actually has an ace up its sleeve. It has the only commercial airport in any national park in the country. We chose this time to fly into the park with Alaska Airlines. We then rented a car and the beauty of a small airport is the car was less than 100 feet from the terminal. You can fly to nearby Idaho Falls or even Salt Lake City as well and then drive here. Although the drive is of course a little longer. If you don't fly, the easiest way is naturally to drive. Well, if you want to get around the park, driving around the park is probably the best thing to do and it's really easy as the park has something called the Grand Teton Loop. This road will take you to most of the sites and attractions and the driving is by and large pretty easy. Now, if you want to venture off the beaten track, you can literally drive down a beaten track, uh, at least for the moment, that's called Moose Wilson Road. Now, this is one of my favorite drives if you want to see wildlife in the park, but currently it is under some form of construction, so be aware of the giant potholes. Also, this road is not open all year round, so be sure you check the dates of opening before you come. Please stick around until the end of this video and I give you some tips and pointers and also tell you my favorite things to do in Grand Teton National Park. <sighs> so, if you want to stay in the park, you can stay in the park. There is a combination in the park from really fancy hotels like uh, Jackson Lake Lodge and Jetty Lake Lodges to a dude ranch and even rustic cabins. So you have a number of choices. Now, if you like camping, there's plenty of that too, but the key is, of course, to book well ahead, like months and months ahead. And the same is true with the hotels. Now, most tourists who actually visit the park stay outside of the park and then visit the park for day trips, half day trips, or things of that nature. Now, this is easy to do considering Yellowstone is only a few minutes to the north of here and Jackson Hole is only about 20 minutes to the south and you have a lot of choices there. When we visit Grand Teton National Park, we actually typically stay in Jackson or at least the area. And usually we utilize one of the rentals offered by Rendezvous Mountain Rentals. They are great. Lots of choices and the customer service is really excellent. But we've also stayed at Fireside in one of their awesome little cabins and I recommend them as well. Now there's also ample accommodation besides those two places that I mentioned in the Jackson Hole area from the expensive to the crazy expensive. Uh, don't forget, this is a very popular place Jackson's very expensive, and you won't find anything cheap in or around the Jackson area. Now, if you want less expensive accommodation, you can go over the pass into Idaho and stay in either Driggs or Victor. These locations are about an hour or so from Grand Teton National Park. There are restaurants in the park, of course, and you'll find them at Coulter Bay, Jenny Lake, and Jackson Lake Lodge. On this trip, we actually did go to eat at Jackson Lake Lodge at their restaurant, and the food was decent. The menu a little bit different, uh, but the one consistency was it was still very expensive. Of course, you can also venture into Jackson where there are plenty of different options for restaurants, and I'll show you some of my favorite restaurants on the screen right now. If you want to try something unique and different, go to a place called Dornan's. The food is good, and it's a lot of fun, and the views are just out of this world. If you're looking for good coffee in the park, well, you probably won't find it. But if you're staying in the Jackson area, you can grab an early morning coffee at Persephone's, Cowboy Coffee, or Snake River Coffee Company. Actually, it'd be wise to grab a couple. So, one of the reasons, and honestly, one of the many reasons people visit Grand Teton National Park is just because it's so incredibly beautiful. The Teton Mountain Range with the Grand and Mount Moran, of 
course, are the highlights, or at least a couple of many. One of the other reasons is the wildlife, which is amazing. And you'll see it, hopefully you'll see it everywhere. Uh, we usually drive the Teton Loop, as I mentioned earlier. It takes us everywhere in the park and to all of the major sites. And if you can stand getting up early in the morning, I highly recommend going to Schwabacher's Landing for sunrise. Like most locations, this is a very popular place, so be sure you get here about an hour before sunrise. So that's really early in the summer months. Stake out a good location and then watch the sunrise. Just stand back, take it slow, and see the Tetons light up in the morning. It's honestly, it's almost a spiritual event. Another way, if you have the time, is to do sunrise at Mormon Row one day and Schwabacher's Landing the next. Mormon Row, of course, is also very popular, and getting a good photo of one of these amazing barns, they're called the Molten Barns, without a fellow tourist jumping in front of you, well, that can be challenging. In the same general region as Snake River Overlook, there is a large parking lot off of the main highway. And this is the location where the famous photographer Ansel Adams took his iconic Snake River and the Tetons photo. Now you can try and emulate this photo and good luck if you do, but be aware that the trees have grown up just a little bit since Ansel was here. But regardless, it's still a very, very special location and the photography is also wonderful. All right, let's head deeper into the park. I love the Moose Wilson Road. And if you drive Moose Wilson Road early in the morning, you may be lucky to see some wildlife. We have seen elk, bears, fox, and moose in this area, all off of Moose Wilson Road. Now there is a lookout that you will pass that overlooks a pond. Now we have seen moose here many times during our visits. Close to Moose Wilson Road is the Craig Thomas Visitor Center. The staff here are very helpful and you can receive updates on the park and animal sightings at this location. Also, it's a great place to get maps and updates on things like camping. Now close to the visitor center is the absolutely exquisite Chapel of the Transfiguration. The setting, this particular setting, is one of the most beautiful and iconic locations and is well worth a visit. And of course, a few photos too. As we continue our drive around the park, we come to a series of lakes, most notably Jenny Lake, String Lake, and Taggart Lake. And of course, there's also the giant Jackson Lake. If you plan on visiting Jenny Lake, get there very, very early in the morning as it's incredibly popular in the summer and parking is very difficult. You can catch a boat across the water as well as paddle, kayaks, and canoes. There's also great hiking on the other side of the lake highlighted by Hidden Falls, an inspiration point. Okay, from Jenny Lake, we'll now head north and hug Jackson Lake. Places to consider stopping when you drive around the lake would be Signal Mountain. There's a great viewpoint uh, up above and it's a great place also where you can see wildlife. If you follow Teton Park Road, you will cross over Jackson Lake Dam and reach a T intersection. If you take a left here, that will take you to Jackson Lake Lodge. If you take a right at the T intersection, that will take you to the famous Oxbow Bend. Close by to the park is Jackson, Wyoming. And this one sleepy little town has become a place where only the rich can afford to live. But thankfully, the rich allow us peasants to visit. And although the feel of Jackson has certainly changed over the years and is definitely not the little town my wife grew up in, it remains a very special place. Besides Jackson's proximity to Grand Teton National Park as well as Yellowstone, the town offers its own unique attractions and characteristics. If you like outdoor activities, well, Jackson has you absolutely covered with downhill skiing, hiking, river float trips, whitewater rafting, kayaking and canoeing, fly fishing, horseback riding, biking, wildlife tours, hot air balloon trips, and I'm sure I've missed out on some others. So there's a lot to do in the area. Other things to do in the Jackson area include, of course, wandering around its iconic town square. There's a lot of shopping here, as well as some good restaurants and coffee places. Also located near Jackson is the National Museum of Wildlife Art, the Elk Refuge, and Teton Village, and the Gondola, if you wanna go up to the top of the mountain and have a really good look at the valley below. 
To the north of the park, of course, is the world-famous Yellowstone National Park. Now, the first thing you have to remember is that while Grand Teton National Park is very large, Yellowstone is huge. And Yellowstone is also insanely busy in the summer too, so be well warned. Now, the top attractions in Yellowstone National Park are very well known, and they include Old Faithful Geyser, Grand Prismatic Spring, which is actually my favorite, Yellowstone Lake, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, Mammoth Hot Springs, Norris Geyser Basin, Tower Fall, and Hayden and Lamar Valleys. So there's obviously a lot to see and allow yourself several days to see most of it. But of course, it also goes without saying that the wildlife are a big attraction in Yellowstone too. However, if you're planning on going to Yellowstone National Park, book well ahead for hotels and campgrounds, even a year ahead. And be well aware that some of the areas in the park are still affected by the floods of 2022. When visiting Grand Teton National Park, it's important to know a few things that are unique to this park before you go. The first one is elevation. The average elevation is 6,800 feet above sea level, and it may take some time to acclimate. So be aware of this and take it slow. Also remember to stay well hydrated. Speaking of hydration, when you're in the park, do not drink water directly from the mountain streams. Use a filtration device. I know of someone, and I'm looking at you, who actually did drink the water from the stream and ended up very sick and in hospital in Jackson with Jardia. Speaking of medical care, for medical emergencies, call 911 in the park if you have cell phone coverage or service. The Grand Teton Medical Clinic is located at Jackson Lake Lodge during the summer months, and St. John's Health is the hospital in Jackson Hole. The park is obviously very cold and icy and snowy in the winter, but during the summers, they're relatively dry, warm, and thankfully sunny. However, we are in the mountains, so even in the summer, mornings can be very cold and the weather can change in an instant. Be bear aware. Black and grizzly bears are very active in the park and do not mess around with any bears. I might add, always, always carry bear spray if you're hiking and of course, know how to use it. And if you're camping, store your food and garbage in wildlife resistant food and trash containers. As for all animals, give them room. Stay at least 25 yards away from most wildlife and 100 yards away from bears and wolves. And do not touch the wildlife. These rules are heavily and rightly enforced. As for your own wildlife, pets are allowed in the park but must be restrained at all times and on a leash of six feet or less. You do need a park pass to enter and these passes can be purchased at any one of the entry points into the park or you can buy them online in advance. The park offers some wonderful boating opportunities and you can take your boat into the park, but be sure you know the rules, including the requirement for a permit and the display of a Wyoming Aquatic Invasive Species decal. There are over 250 miles of hiking trails in the park and you can get updates, information and hiking maps at the visitor centers or ranger station. All right, my favorite things in the park would include Mormon Row at sunrise, Schwabacher's Landing at sunrise, and any wild animal that I see from a distance. One of my favorites that no one seems to talk about is the Chapel of the Sacred Heart. It's a beautiful little church, although it does get forgotten as the Chapel of the Transfiguration gets all the love. All right, best time of year? Depends if you're a skier or not, uh, but my favorite time is fall, mid to late September. If you have watched this far, thank you for watching. And if this video has given you any value or information that hopefully is helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would consider liking the video and subscribing to this channel. Enjoy Grand Teton National Park. What a place.